What's up guys, welcome back to another um, Dark Souls 1 lore through. Um, this is my first series and of course I did not uh, properly check if my microphone was working. So um, yeah, this is going to be a voiceover instead. Um, I don't remember what I talked about, I don't remember how long I sat on things. So we're just going to try to play it by ear. I was just showing there uh, a moment ago that uh, you can see Isolith from the Tomb of the Giants. Also, I farmed a lot at this point. So um, I was able to level up all my weapons and all my gear. And, and then I got a few items here. So I was going to read those. Um, uh, and I cleaned up all my inventory and all the stuff which I'll be doing. Uh, moving forward so things are a little bit easier to deal with or whatever so but we got the silver knight sword from uh, farming in uh, Anor Londo and the dragon slayer great bull in Anor Londo I just went and picked that up so and I made a divine balder side sword for this area you can see I've maxed out my uh, sealer outfit so it has the most defense it can give it's actually probably one of the best light armors in the game. But, um, yeah, so the Silver Knight Sword, um, I got from just killing the knights or whatever. The Silver Knights of Anor Londo guard the city using this beautifully slender weapon. Its chain attacks in which the wielder takes great advancing steps and makes use of his body weight are deadly, even in single hits. So, not a lot of lore on that one, so, but just figure I'd read it. And then the Dragon Slayer Great Bow, which does have some lore on it. Um, which I find going through that window uh, in the Great Hall of Anor Londo, which I just didn't do when we were there. Bow of the Dragon Slayers, led by Hawkeye Goth, one of Gwyn's four knights. This bow's unusual size requires that it be anchored to the ground when fired only uses specialized great arrows. So these were the bows that were used to fight the uh, the dragons in the in the big war. And I just show here that uh, what what it, what it says is true um, that when you do fire it it does uh, you kind of like slam it down on the ground and uh, and then you can fire. I like some of the attention to detail that they do with, uh, you know, certain weapons to do little different things, and this is one of those ex one of those examples, um, where because it's so big, they thought that would be a a cool mechanic, and once you move it around, you can't fire until you've set it down and pulled it back. It's cool, but anyway. Um, so yeah, we're going to explore, um, the Tomb of the Giants today, uh, which actually doesn't take very long. We'll do a couple of extra things at the end here, but, um, first things first, we're going to go talk to uh, Patches, <coughs> who's right here off of the bonfire. Good day. You look reasonably sane. What are you doing in the catacombs? Are you a cleric or something? So, Patches uh, dislikes clerics a lot, and um, if you had met him first and talked to him, and he asked that question, I think you get a, an item, I think it's like a humanity. Uh, it doesn't really matter, though, because either way, he still treats you the same, but he definitely is biased against clerics from the way of white. Um, but we're not, so we'll answer no. No? Really? Then I'd have no qualms telling you. There's a fine stash of treasure right down that hole. I found it first, but, well, we're friends now. I'll split it with you. In any case, have a look. It'll shimmer you blind. <laughs> I really like how he puts that. I found it first, but I'll let you uh, go and get it. Um... So, 
Yeah, I mean, hey, he's... Now, take a closer look. This is a character that's in, you know, all of the uh, From Software games in various forms or another. Um, and he always does the same thing. The only, like, gray area is Dark Souls 2. This is what I do, my friend. The trinkets I'll be stripping off your corpse, that's the real treasure. <laughs> In Dark Souls 2, there's Pate. And he's warring with Creighton. Um, and in here, you know, we hear Latrec talk about um, patches. So patches and Latrec are kind of like Creighton and Pate. Uh, this is the last place you can pick up the Skull Lantern if you hadn't gotten in the catacombs at all. Um, so if you needed to, you could... Um, if you can get to this bonfire, you can at least come down here and definitely get one. But anyway, here's Rhea. Um... We knew that she was trapped down here, and we found her. Interesting that she's down where Patches pushed us. You're no hollow, are you? Thank goodness. Please be careful. There are two fierce hollows not far from here. They were once brave knights, and my former escorts. Who would let such strong spirits be hollow so? Heavens, is there nothing? Nothing at all to be done. Um, You're no hollow. Thank good, please be careful. Yeah, yeah so it, apparently Vince and Nico died from probably being pushed down by, uh, by patches here. So they've actually lost their mind and became hollow at this point. Um, this is a really interesting fight. So I actually parry a Wrath of the Gods right here. Watch this. I fully parry it, my stamina goes to zero, and I took no damage right when I stood right next to him. I've never seen anything like that. If anyone uh, has any like videos or anything uh, describing how to, do, or I mean, I guess you time it well, but it's just it's just really interesting to me that it uh, it actually. Uh, I parried it just by happenstance, so. Very cool. Anyway, we'll go talk to Rhea. You banished those two hollows, did you? It pains me to think of the trouble my failings have caused. I am certain that both Vince and Nico are grateful to you. Thank you so very much. Here, these belonged to them. You deserve them more than I. So we get the replenishment miracle. I'm certain that both in thank you. So yeah, I mean that's all we need to do to save Rhea. And uh, we'll see her again. So, but let's read the uh, replenishment miracle. That we got from Rhea. Common miracle amongst cleric knights. Beware of the cleric knight blessed by replenishment, for he shall not fall easily. So yeah, I'm certain. Rhea is going to be the source of all the rest of the miracles in the game. And, uh, and we'll run into her once we... Uh, since we killed Petrus, we can now let her live and we don't have to worry about any weird triggers. Uh, so there's these bone uh, statues here. There, I don't know that there's a ton of lore about them. They're just bodies of, you know, skeletons. Uh, so it'll just be uh, just that. Um, but yeah, we have to find our way out of this hole now. That Pat just put us in. We got a couple of uh, bone towers over here. There's also, you know, since we, uh, I'm doing this as a voiceover, I, I don't remember what I've said about certain things. So in other words, I don't know if, uh, you know, I spoke about something in the previous episode or if it was in this episode. 
I don't know if we've talked about the Sunlight Maggot at all. I don't know if we've talked about the White Titanite Chunks. So apologies if I end up repeating myself uh, a little bit. Uh, I'll try to talk about what's on the screen. Uh, whatever. But I'm probably talking about the fact that the White Titanite Chunks are used to upgrade the Divine Balder Sword. Um, and that I was going to get some White Titanite Chunks and a White Titanite Slab and go upgrade that before I fought Nito, but I don't end up doing that. Uh, and that is a, uh, <laughs> a hidden wall that you pretty much have to know about if you do patches the storyline. Uh, so I think that's the only in the game where that's the case, but uh, now that we're out and safe, let's talk to Patches and see what he has to say. Oh, you! I... Well, let's just calm down. Talk about things. I did you wrong, but I didn't mean it. These temptations, they can, well, overcome me. You know what I mean, don't you? Please, forgive me. You and me, we're jolly undead outcasts, aren't we? Um, I forgive him, but just because he's a merchant later. Oh, brilliant. A second chance. Wonderful. I had a feeling you'd understand. I did. But uh, if I were in your shoes, ooh, who knows what I'd have done. But now we're friends again, eh? <laughs> yeah, so he... I did you wrong, but I didn't mean it. These temptations, you know what I mean, don't you? He, yeah, he becomes a merchant later and... We can get a few items that are key that we can only get from him. So he remains alive for the time being, um, but we will kill him before the end of the game, as we will with everyone. Um, so, but he's kind of an interesting character. Um, yeah, so he's in Demon Souls. As patches, he's in Dark Souls Three. As patches, um, they all have different like adjectives. This is uh, Demon Souls is patches the hyena, and this game it's trusty patches I think, and then it's unbreakable patches in three, and then it's just paint in two. Uh, but we'll t we'll talk about that when we get there. So yeah, these uh, bone skeleton things are pretty nasty. They can really do uh, do you in. Uh, I can I can plunge attack and hit them for two hits and, and kill them. So that's nice. Uh, but I don't want to run into any. Um, there is a bunch of there's an archer out here. There's one of those dog giants, and then there's a black knight and so what I try to do is I kite out the white the black knight and I'm trying to um, I'm trying to hide from the archer which I don't do very well on a number of occasions um, I, I'm successful in taking out the, uh, the black knight here but uh, <laughs> uh, not without my typical follies uh, so, halberds are pretty tough to parry. I mean, like, there's a few that you don't come across all that often. Um, like, there's only one. Well, I guess there's two halberds. Um, but yeah, because I got hit by that arrow, I got hit. And then, of course, the arrow hits me right before I can roll. But I beat him. <laughs> got the Black Knight shield, he won't respawn. And now that uh, archer has... Uh, I, there's a vendetta put out against that. And of course I didn't rest at the bonfire, so this is just a terrifically executed folly. Um, but yeah, we're, um, we're going to read that. Shield of the Black Knights that wander Lordran, a flowing canal is chiseled deeply into its face. Long ago the Black Knights faced the Chaos Demons and were charred black, but their shields became highly resistant to fire. So yeah, that's uh, more of the same lore um, that we're 
we were dealing with. So uh, I take this time to uh, kind of put things back into their box, although I start doing that off screen after this because uh, I realize that it can be um, just as monotonous to, uh, to go through this <laughs> on screen here, but I did it. Um, there are some like changes uh, that I wanted to make from previous episodes. I don't know when I do that, but uh, I misinterpreted some uh, of the things I was reading. Uh, I was reading them too quickly. Um, so I, I do take some time to uh, correct some things from the previous uh, playthrough about Isolith and the Daughters of Chaos and such. Um, Anyway, of course, I I nearly died to that thing again because my uh, my timing was all off. But without a uh, a black knight roaming around here, we can just take a direct path, skip these. I guess I call them dog skeletons, <laughs> dog giants. I think they're just these guys, but that are crawling on all fours, and kill that archer. And there's a little ledge you can drop down here. It's quite hard to see. Uh, but it leads you to a unique item over here, um, which doesn't have a great deal of lore on, um, but it's good to have. And there's a little uh, ambush, so we'll take out these bone towers uh, pretty quickly here without a lot of uh, issues. And uh, the anticipation is killing me. What is that item? trying to see if you could see anything down there. It's the Covetous Silver Serpent Ring. We have the gold one, which gets items, item discovery up, and this raises your um, souls. Silpern is an imperfect dragon and symbol of the undead. It has a habit of devouring prey even larger than itself, and has an association with gluttony. So, we talked about the uh, gold serpent ring in the same way. There's no additional lore here. All right, but we're gonna jump over here and take this guy out and try our best to avoid all the, uh, the, uh, well, I guess we take this guy out. So yeah, he has terrible timing. I'm always really bad at, uh, that's the bad one too. I can almost one-shot you and certain cases. I, I started leveling up Vitality, so it's not that big of a deal, but uh, those guys are tough. So, um, I'm trying to find this item over here. I happened to guess right. Oh, uh, I guessed right later. I thought this was the item, but this is the bonfire, which is great. Um, but there's a shield up here, which we're going to get. Um, so, before I respawn everything, I decide to try to <clears throat> search for it and my memory served me correct and I was able to find it with no problems there is a number of bone dogs over here but I just try to avoid them uh, and there's this long path here with a shield that has some very interesting lore which is especially relevant to an episode that we do later but it's the effigy shield And it says, Frightful Occult Shield defends against divine weapons and lightning. In an ill-fated plot to destroy the very gods, the followers of the occult once attempted to steal the power of Nito, the first of the dead. So yeah, there's a group that tries to uh, destroy the gods with the occult, um, which we said is the antithesis of the divine. And in this case, they tried to... Um, go to Gravelar Nito and uh, steal his power, uh, whether it's the power of being able to kill things or bring death, or whether it's the right of kindling, I'm not sure, uh, because they said Pinwheel stole a power from the Gravelord, and uh, obviously he had kindling, the, the right of kindling. So I don't know if Pinwheel was part of that occult group or not. I mean, he's a necromancer, so... Um, certainly would fit. 
But in any case, um, we're going to uh, we're going to kindle up this bonfire to the max because why not? I mean, we uh, we have all of the we have the right of kindling, and we have the humanity just burning a hole in our pocket. So <laughs> let's uh, do that. And of course, I uh, yeah I uh, crashed the game, or I soft soft crashed it, soft locked it. When you like sit down and do an action too quickly, uh, certain actions it uh it kind of freezes and doesn't bring a menu up and you can't do anything. I don't know a fix for that other than quitting. So if anyone knows uh, how to do that, that would be very helpful to me. Um, but yeah, so um, I believe that's the only time that happens in this playthrough and. Uh, So yeah, now we're gonna level this up to max uh, max level. I don't think we nearly need it. Uh, I mean, we're we're good leveled up at this point. Um, we have the right tools for the job here. Um, and in the moment where I decide to go back to get the large divine ember and, and do that whole headache and upgrade the balder um, side sword to plus 10 um, divine I'm just like eh, let's just try it <laughs> and we we kill Nito in one one hit one <laughs> just kill him in one hit uh, kill him in one try so yeah um, so yeah the uh, um, the tomb of the Giants is not large at all. There's the two bone skeletons. Um, it's not large all that much. It's just it's just a maze. It's completely dark, and there's some really tough enemies in it. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, if you know your way around and and where the key items are, uh, it's not that big of a deal. So. So anyway, I feel confident enough to do, that I won't be back here, so I just switch my thing up, my uh, my headband, my head armor, and uh, yeah, there's a uh, crystal lizard here, which we go and grab, and which causes us to cause Paladin, <laughs> which causes Paladin Leroy, Leroy to invade, who previously helped us on the pinwheel fight. Well, quote unquote, help uh, helped us. We didn't need much help during that fight, but we summoned him. Um, so yeah, we're gonna learn a bit about P Paladin Leroy uh, coming up, especially with his items and his uh, armor set, which we'll get in the Nido boss room. But we took him out easy, and we get uh, his weapon and his uh, shield, the Grant and the Sanctus. So let's read those and see what those are all about. They don't have the most amazing lore on them, but um, a legendary weapon of the Way of White granted to an undead paladin long ago. This mass of iron can only be lifted by those with inhuman strength, but it is blessed and very effective against agents of dark. So that doesn't talk about Leroy all that much, but it uh, talks about the Way of White for sure. And the Sanctus. A legendary weapon of the Way of White granted to an undead paladin. Once blessed with the protection of a white flame, but its power has all but faded so that it provides only slight HP recovery. I love how, like, random uh, weapons and stuff in this game, like, just, you know, g give you little perks and stuff. Um, whether it's HP recovery or higher defenses or you have to set it on the ground or I mean just anything it's, it's all interesting so anyway there's nothing here so we're just gonna run through this um, no need to take anyone out and then we can see all these piles of bones and of course a number of pinwheels uh, obviously evidence that he was duplicating himself and things and that there's multiple copies of him 
uh, in this area. I guess they're technically minor, minor pinwheels. But yeah, you can see here that they have six arms, and there's all these little baby uh, skeletons, which we'll talk about in a second. Oh, and they can drop the masks uh, in chunks and stuff, so. Um, but yeah, you can see that they have six arms, and they have a weird figure under the robe, and um, yeah, they don't really tell us. I, I don't know where you learn the story of Pinwheel. I just know about it. But like, for example, these are all little children, um, skeletons, and uh, so he lost his wife and his and his child um, through some terrible accident, and he's been trying to recreate them, and he's been trying to become a necromancer to do this, and. Uh, and he's been trying to kind of duplicate with the use of skeletons. He's been trying to duplicate these things so that he can bring back his wife and his and his son. And so, yeah, this is the area here where um, he has somehow he's not very good at it yet, but he's gotten all these little children to run around from from bones and such. Um, yeah pretty sad story but um yeah they drop humanity and i think sometimes chunks that is the children um also they drop um the pinwheels themselves drop chunks and and the the different masks although you can buy them all from patches later which is why we want to save him i thought that might give more of the story but it does not so and I'm checking here to see if I have enough to level up, and I do. Um, but I just say, eh, let's try it. So yeah, we go in here, and I have the Divine Sword so that I can kill the... Uh, <laughs> when I skip the cutscene, of course. Um, I, try, I kill the skeletons first before Nito uh, can get there, so that uh, I'm just dealing with Nito. He has his Gravelord Dance, which I very poorly timed, although it doesn't seem to do a ton of damage. Um, relatively. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you go too close to Nito or try to get away, there's a whole nother load of these uh, of skeletons, including big, big skeletons and such. And so it's best to kind of hold, stay back here, hope he doesn't do his Gravelord Dance all that much. And with the Divine Sword, you can kill these guys, and then now you're just dealing with Nito. It was a relatively easy fight once uh, you just need to basically have no competition, and then you have to recognize when he does his area of effect tech, which is pretty brutal. Um, but he kind of like gets down on the ground, so, um, so it's easy. It's easy to kind of see him, like, turtling up or whatever, like there. Uh, I don't have a lot of room here, but I miraculously avoid it. And rinse and repeat. We can see that he is made of skeletons. Um, I don't know how that translates to what he was. Like how he sticks his leg out when he... When he, hit, when he uses his sword. <laughs> and he went for his area of effect, but I killed him in time. I don't know what he used to look like. He probably wears those skeleton things from, you know, killing people or whatever. So, yeah, that was, that was Nito. And now we're back in the boss room that we were in before um, to join the Covenant. But, uh, killed Nito. Uh, I don't know if you can continue with the Covenant after killing Nito. I'm not, I don't actually remember at all. But um, yeah, we do have to reload here to get Paladin Leroy's stuff. Um, I'm surprised that we didn't have to for Lutrec, but we certainly do have to for Paladin Leroy. So we're gonna just reload real quick and 
he's got some interesting stuff on uh, on his lore on his stuff. So this is a good this is a good find here. So there's where he last ends up. Couldn't handle Nito. We get the Paladin Helm. And let's let's take a look at what it says. <clears throat> Helm of Leroy, Paladin of the Catacombs. Long ago, the Way of White produced its first undead, a paladin in golden armor. With the legendary treasures Grant and Sanctus, Leroy set out for Lordran, Land of the Gods, in the first undead mission of the Way of White. So yeah, this is huge. Um, you know, this, this, this shows that... Um, you know, the Way of White uh, kind of started the whole undead mission ritual. Uh, and it started with one person, and they made him undead. They're like, we're going to get the curse on you. Uh, I'm not sure how they do that, but it seems like the Way of White have mastered it. And if I were to guess why that were the case, uh, it would be because the Way of White probably knew about the prophecy and they were thinking well whoever can kind of succeed lord gwyn would be the next king of sunlight and king of of of, of all and they wanted a, a monopoly on that you know they wanted to be in control of everything so they started producing undead specifically to send them to lordran to fulfill the prophecy and succeed Gwyn. That's some scary stuff. Like, I wonder how many people they, quote-unquote, produced. But yeah, Paladin Leroy is, is, this is the remnant of probably long ago when they first created it. And we saw that, uh, you know, Rhea was doing the same thing as part of the Way of White. So... Yeah, it's it's still going on to this day, or at least she could be phasing in from another time too. But you know, it, it's definitely a it's a practice that they still engage in. So very interesting to me. So anyway, we're done. Um, it's only thirty minutes in, and we're done with the uh, with um, with the tomb of the giants. Very. Uh, relatively easy area to go through. Um, I decide to start leveling up strength just so I can maybe uh, start handling some weapons um, moving forward um, just to show off some of the moves and stuff. Uh, I, I, I don't know, I don't really need a ton more vitality. Endurance is pretty good. I don't need to wear any heavier armor. Dexterity is 40, it's good, and I, I mean resistance is a garbage stat. Um, and I'm not going to intelligence or faith. I mean, maybe it'd be nice to start using some miracles, but we're reading all about them. That's all I really care about. Um, I was going to do like a highlight of, of like pyromancies and such where I kind of went through each one because they, they kind of interesting. They do like relate to each other. Um, like you can, there's lore in what they do. Uh, and that's similar for, um, sorceries and such like that. But, um, you know that's uh, that's probably out of the scope of the uh, of the playthrough that I want to do. Um, I don't want to get all the weapons. I don't want to you know get all the dialogue. I don't want all the random situations. I'm just playing through as a normal playthrough and just trying to you know interpret a basic story. Um, that one could get when playing through. Of course, I, I am trying to do a number of, um, you know, side missions, side quests with Solaire and Logan and, and whatever, because they do have material content that does um, give good lore that I want to talk about. But, um, you know, I'm not trying to go crazy or anything. So, um, if you are someone who doesn't know this game, very well and you're learning a lot here I would definitely recommend that you 
take some of this information and do another playthrough and play with spells, play with pyromancies, play with miracles, you know, play with strength builds, play with dex builds, play with, you know, different armors and different things. They are, everything has a little subtle uh, thing here. So, so yeah, uh, this is where I do a correction with the orange chard ring. Let's read it carefully and I'll describe an orange ring enchanted by a witch. Since his sores were inflamed by lava from birth, his witch sisters gave him this special ring, but fool that he is, he readily dropped it, and from that spot a terrible centipede was born. So I just completely misinterpreted this last time. So the, the witch, the sisters, the daughters of Isla did have a brother, and they gave him this ring because he was born with lava inflammations, which means to me he probably was born after some of the chaos stuff. I don't know. But he was so foolish that he he dropped it. He lost the ring, but when it fell on the ground, that's where the centipede demon was born. So the, the, the ring had so much power in it that it created a demon when it touched the ground, which is very interesting. So there they are uh, his sisters, it is his brother, and it is likely the ceaseless discharge um, who was watching over one of the sisters although it's describes it as Koilana's set it's just anyone the sisters set um, one of which we talked to is Koilana the other thing I want to point out is that um, Koilana and the one that ceaseless discharge is looking over and Grana the the just the daughter of chaos or whatever that we find in Isleth right before the bed of chaos the, those three um, were not deformed, like like Quelag, like the firm lady, and like potentially the two that were trapped in the bed of chaos. So obviously three got out alive, and I'm not sure what happened with Ceaseless Discharge, because it seems to imply that he was born into his deformed state somehow, um, and was always crippled, and because he's a, certainly a different type of demon. Um, you know, he doesn't look like the other demons and he has different properties. He's also very huge, which implies to me that he was, um, had a very powerful soul related to him. And I don't know, you know, how that, uh, relates to what Isolith was doing, or the Queen of Isolith. So, now, we're going to go back, uh, I should have probably done this in the Isolith episode, but, uh, we're just doing up some loose ends before we go to the Duke's archives. Um, and uh, we're going to now go and uh, get a couple of these items now that we have the, the orange ring, the lava ring, so we can walk on lava. Um, I do accidentally attract two Taurus demons here and, uh, and die. So... You know, we're gonna have to go back. But, as you notice, I've killed this guy that was standing there. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six left. And then I kill this guy. So there's seven total there. So when I die and come back, they don't respawn. However, in the past, I mean, maybe a certain amount spawn, but some don't respawn. But I was always under the impression, you see, now there's five left. And I believe when I die, yeah, see, I grab two by accident here. And when I come back, I believe there's only five left. Which, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just, uh... I, I just remember wrong that these guys uh, respond infinitely. But yeah, they just, they just completely... I just got my timing way off on them, and uh, and they slaughtered me. So, um, but good, I rested here. Um, so we go back. But yeah, if we go back, I believe there's gonna only be five there, um, or maybe six. Like maybe one doesn't respawn, and the others do. Because I could swear that. There's not as many when I get back here than that when I when I just fought them. So I, it's good doing this voiceover or whatever because now I can actually check. Okay. 
And uh, yeah, I do try to look and see where the Tomb of Giants is, because at the beginning of this episode, when we were looking down, we see this little, uh, little kind of like peninsula into the lava. The lava is still rendered from the Tomb of the Giants, which, you know, fair enough. They got so much right, you know, the little details like that are, are totally okay to uh, for them to not bother programming it but anyway i'm trying to look for it here it doesn't look like you can see it there is however like a hole out there um but I, i'm not sure the like physics is right because like for all the stuff you can see from the tomb of giants you really can't see anything from here but i'm assuming that that hole is where the tomb of giants is up there so it's kind of cool anyway so now going back here, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know what was going on in my brain. I thought these all, because the Capra Demon responds for sure. We killed him. Uh, I don't think we'll look over there necessarily, but if you look over there, the Capra Demon, the minor Capra Demon, before you fight like Kirk or whatever, that responds. So, it's a cool little thing. Um, also, yeah, the Taurus demons are these, you know, they're chaos demons, so I mean, they are apparently immune to lava. Yeah, you can see the Capra demon in the background right there. Um, I don't think they're immune to fire damage. Like, if you had a fire damage, I mean, they're obviously heavily resistant to it, but I, uh, I don't think they're um, immune to fire damage. I should get out the Skull Lantern and hit them with it, because <laughs> we found out the Skull Lantern has a fire damage property associated with, with it when you punch. But, um... Yeah, so basically what we're grabbing here is there's just a soul. Um... I like how you can't even see what's going on when they jump from the dust, but I'm rolling right when they when he lands so it just looks like I'm running into him they do a jump and then I'm just there <laughs> like I just took, tanked it um, yeah so this is just a soul over here um, but you know might as well grab it why not right and then this other item over here is uh, an ember it's the Chaos Ember, um, which is highly associated with, you know, Isolith itself. When we gave Vamos the Flame Ember, he said, oh, this is from Nilando, but um, doesn't say that about this one. Um, okay. Ember required for weapon ascension. Chaos Flame Ember is an art of the lost city of Isolith handled only by blacksmiths knowledgeable in ancient methods. So yeah, we learned that Vamos is, he talks in, I think he talks in the old tongue. He's got a weird voice. And he, uh, oh yeah, we didn't read this. Soul of the Great Lord Nido, first of the dead. Uh, Grave Lord Nido is master's death of all manner of beings. The power of the soul is so great it satiates the Lord Vessel despite the fact that it's been diminished. I, I missed it, um, but I remember, uh, and what I end up talking about here is that uh, this kind of supports my thought that um, the soul is what brought these people power and not the other way around, or, you know, it, they there are no gods. Um, you know, gods are just people or beings or whatever. I mean, people are even gods in a sense. They're... they're the beings that were kind of given the dark soul fragments, uh, which is humanity. But, you know, let's say, you know, beings, beings with souls are gods, with powerful souls are gods, and that, you know, Nito had his soul and used it to create death, and, um, and that that's, even though it's, its power of the soul has kind of been depleted from using that, it's still enough to satiate the Lord Vessel. I'm not saying I'm totally right, but we certainly don't see a lot in the game that counteracts my theory about 
you know, there being no gods and such. And that the people that worship them or, um, you know, the p people like Frampton and, and stuff that want you to succeed Gwen are misinformed or intentionally misleading. I mean, that's, again, my opinion. Anyway, I was saying about Vamos, we learn more about him and that he is ancient. He is part of a uh, an ancient line and uh, he deals with embers that deal with ancient things. Um which is the flame and the chaos and uh, whatever. So yeah, Patches is back now that we've uh, killed Nito. Oh, we meet again. How many of you are there? You've come at the perfect time. I'm done with the looting. I'm a humble merchant now. And wondrous treasures have I at a special price for you. There you are. Have a nice look at them. Oh, relax. No more funny business out of me, my friend. So yeah, um, I thought we'd get a lot more lore from this stuff, but um, we don't. <laughs> he doesn't have a lot of great stuff, so. But he has the eyes of death. His these are just things he's eluded. Divine blessing he probably got from the clerics. Prism stones. Um, we looked at those sometime before. They, they have, there's a placement of them later that we'll see that's kind of intentional, but for now, he just has them because they were all around the, um, the Tomb of Giants, so maybe he placed them, or maybe someone placed them and he took them off their body. But he has Heal and Great Heal Excerpt. I think Heal we haven't read. I could be wrong. The cast a miracle, the caster learns a tale of the gods and says a prayer to be blessed by its revelations. Heal is the shortest of such tales. And then we know Great Heal excerpt is like a short form of Great Heal, which is a longer tale. But yeah, all his items he has is interesting. They're all cleric stuff. Well used old bronze battle axe with a long hilt and crescent shaped blade. One of the blessed weapons of the way of light. The crescent axe is bequeathed to cleric warriors who have proven their faith. Uh, then we have the canvas. Uh, Cal is for clerics on pilgrimage. Um, and we know that Nico and Vince had the mace and the crescent axe, respectively. And then we have the Thurland talisman, which we've read before, but um, he, you know, he has it. Uh, it's interesting. And then he has all the masks. He has the cleric helm, which I don't know if we read, so we're going to read it again. Helm worn by the warrior clerics of the Way of White, who are famous for being unyielding in battle. It is rather substantial in size and weight, making it wear, its wearer look even bigger than he actually is. Uh, and then he has all these. One of the three masks of Panwheel, the necromancer who stole the power of, of the Gravelord and reigns over the catacombs. This mask belonging to the father so that he raises equipment load. Um, and then we're going to look at the mother and the child as well. I think we, well, we have the child that raises sta uh, stamina speed. Mother is, do I just skip over mother? It doesn't matter. I, I thought that we learned more about Pinwheel and I thought that these masks would be the way that we learned it about it. So I'm not sure might have to look that up, you know, what the source uh, is for learning about pinwheels trying to recreate its dead child and wife through the power of um, um, necromancy. It could be that people have just put it together from these descriptions and just what he does, um, which, so maybe it's not 100% accurate, but uh, that's what I've heard from so many different people that I just take it as fact. It's, you know, it's just another interesting, um, look at Mother, slightly raise HP, yeah. Yeah, I guess it's a very father, mother, and child quality. Here, have you met quality. that backwoods Shiva? Believe me on this one, my love. A man is trouble. I can see it in his eyes. I just can. Here we <laughs> learn. No doubt about it. We learn that Patches has troubles with everyone. Yeah. Have you met that sunbathing Solaire? Believe me on this one, my love. He's a complete idiot. But he happens to be an awfully strong idiot. So just nod your head and keep him on your side. <laughs> Wait, have you met Petra?
adventurous. That self-proclaimed cleric. Self Believe me on this one, my love. The man is scum. Don't you be fooled by his claims to do good. They're all the same, those rotten clerics. So yeah, he says everyone's bad, but he also says Petrus is bad, which we've either figured out or we assumed ourselves. And he says that he's a self-proclaimed cleric, which is interesting. That might be true. But he hates clerics, and he thinks everyone is scum. So I don't know if he's the most reliable source for any of that stuff. But uh, it's just another thing about Petrus being maybe not the most Boy, awesome have you character. met Lautrec the Embraced? Believe me on this one, my love. He's completely mad. He wouldn't think twice about cutting somebody down. So watch out for him. Especially if you've humanity to spare. I'm done with the looting. I'm a and wondrous trek. Yeah, so... What? Nothing appeals to you. So he just talks about everyone. And he basically says how they're terrible. And they're gonna do bad things. Which is true about Latrec and Petrus. But not so true about... Uh, Hello there. I thought that perhaps you thought... So have you come to... He doesn't know about these guys, though. So now I'm just trying to check... Heading out, are you? Uh, you have great... What these guys are trying to say, because at some point... Logan has to leave for the Duke's archives, and we're pretty much there, so I was just like, I hope he leaves, because I want to finish out his story. He does. We do finish out his story. So... No worries there. But, um... Yeah, now we're going to go up to Rhea. As I say, this this last part is just a... Uh, just kind of a, tying up some loose ends before we kind of go to the last area, which is the most lore-rich area of the game. I do the Duke's Archives in three episodes because uh, we just talk about so much stuff, so... But yeah, this is where we find Rhea. If we... If Petrus doesn't kill Hello. I will never forget what you did. I am deeply indebted, for it was not within my power to save Vince or Nico. I cannot thank you enough. In case you have not heard, I am Rhea of Thoroughland. I only wish there was some way I could help you. But I am inexperienced, and I only know the art of miracles. If that could be of any help, speak to me again. So yeah, she's got all the great miracles, and we're gonna see what she's got and what they say. <laughs> but I don't know what I'm talking about here. I'm probably talking about Vince and Nico. And them dying, actually. Oh, I'm talking about the channelers. How we found a channeler here. Uh, and that we learned that Seath is, you know capturing maidens from the way of white uh and such and so that it's a nice little detail that it's from so separated parts of the game we see a channeler at the beginning and here kind of towards the end we see like she'll i won't finish her whole plot line i'm gonna kill her because i we can't buy all her miracles but it's cool that like she would have been stolen by a channeler and brought to seeth um had we played the whole thing out th properly uh, it's just a nice detail, like all details in this game. <laughs> but I have a lot to say about it, apparently. Um... So. Could a miracle be of any help to you? I would be most pleased if that were so. May we discuss miracles then? Get prayer from her, of course. Makes sense. We can enter the way of white through her Vince as well. And Nico were fooled by a lout named Patches and turned into hollows. My prayers did them no good. It is my ignorance. My frailty that has sealed their fates. Perhaps Petrus realized my weakness all along, and thus made the decision to abandon me. I can hardly blame him now. 
she takes uh, full responsibility for it, which is really interesting. But she does admit or tell us that Petrus did abandon her. But he, she credits him by saying he knew that I was inexperienced and left for because he knew it was a lost cause. I think that's giving Petrus a little bit too much credit, especially since we know that he murders her later. Um, and she does talk about Patches being the one that actually kicked them down. So, so she has a divine blessing, much like... Uh, Patches had. And yeah, the goddess of sunlight, Guinevere, daughter of the great lord Gwyn, he is cherished by all as a symbol of bounty and fertility. So, now that we've seen her in the flesh, it makes more sense reading that. Uh, yeah, we read through these miracles, Force, this quickly. I'm talking about here that uh, Force and Wrath of the Gods and Emit Force are all similar. It's kind of interesting. Um, quickly acting miracle inflicts no damage. We've read this before. Um, but um, um, I certainly talk about it. So when we read the Wrath of the Gods, which she has, uh, I don't think we've read Great Heal. But we'll get back to Force and Wrath of the Gods in a second. Great Heal is a long tale only learned by a select few. No caster will be disappointed by the bountiful life that it yields. And yet, here's Wrath of the Gods. Uh, Wrath of the Gods was an epic tale that tattered over time and devolved into the modern force. This primal form of force emits a shockwave that also inflicts damage. So this is the first miracle that, I, th I think, the only miracle that causes damage. And it seems to say that the tale changes and becomes just force, which just has a push but no... Um, damage associated with it. And then that gets split off into Emit Force, which is a non-way of white miracle. It's kind of the same story of Wrath of the Gods. And just, it's very interesting that this is the way I would imagine things like this happening in real life. Uh, it's just a really nice universe crafting uh, that they do here. And, and they have a functional thing as well. Uh, and Magic Barrier is new as well. Um, but it is still Havel's. Miracle of Bishop Havel the Rock. Cover body and defensive magic coating. This coating greatly boosts magic defense, assisting warriors who must face the magic which Bishop Havel countered so proficiently. We knew that he uh, he did not like Seath. He didn't like all dragons. Uh, uh, but he didn't even like Seath that helped them. So he still fought um, so yeah, we killed her. We're gonna grab her talisman. I thought we got the pendant here, but that might be when you um, buy all of her miracles. So I thought we would be able to read the pendant, but it has no real lore or things. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the cult, <laughs> the meme of it. So. Medium for casting miracles of the gods, ivory talismans are granted only to female clerics, and their value is affected dramatically by their owner's fate. So. Yeah. Um, I can't recall what, I mean, we do have a, a couple minutes left here, um, so I think I might try to go to Nulando here. I might be literally trying to wrap everything up before we go to the Duke's archives. Um, so we'll see here. But yeah, just in general, this game, you know, has a universe associated with it, and, uh, and it really, like, oh no, I'm gonna go to Ramos. That's what I was originally doing. I do go back to Nilando, uh, in the next episode. The next episode's a general loose ends. I'm just doing a little bit of stuff here. Um, but I just love how this game like really presents a universe. Um, you know, like with, with how things would happen. People believe things that are true. Some people believe things that are false. Um, some people have good motives, some people have bad motives, some people are good but have no bad things. They don't know the correct thing. Uh, 
tales like miracles change and evolve from different people over time and it's just a living breathing world and uh, you just don't see that in, in, in a lot of games and after you know playing through this and kind of understanding the the amount of depth that's put into the level design the characters the mechanics as I'm, I'm commenting on how beautiful this waterfall is which I missed the first time around um, you know like how the mechanics and the story match up perfectly you know the mechanics of the game like there's a force and there's a wrath of gods they're related but they're different but you would need them for different things from gameplay perspective but they evolve from the same similar tales it's just once you get to this type of detail it's really hard to like go back <laughs> to games where you're like why is this enemy there no reason why is this item here no reason why do the enemies look like this here no reason it looks cool i mean there's a place for everything i i'm not uh Wah, wah. I'm not uh, you know, exactly criticizing other games. I, mean, I love other games, <laughs> of course. Uh, but I'm just saying that there is that Dark Souls slump, so they say, which I have <laughs> pretty hard. Once I played this and got into it, I, I just couldn't. I'm right now unable to get a lot of satisfaction from other games, so... Um, but hopefully it won't last forever. Hello, you. It is nice to come back through here with everything kind of cleared out. Um, Necromancer's gone, and the path's all lit, and all set up, and whatever. So, All right, now we're going to do our Vamos thing. Um, he's not wearing his helm, I'm pointing out here, which we get from him. Also, even though it's clipping really badly here, he has the, like, the HP Lovecraft Cthulhu tentacles out of his face, which I think is important, you know, because obviously Miyazaki was involved with Bloodborne, which is almost entirely Lovecraft-based, so obviously he's had a love for it before. <laughs> and I like how he's using the coffins for the, the forges here. Hmm. Why, that's an ember unlike any that I have seen. A very curious pattern. Could it be the flame of the legendary witch? I know. Suppose you left that ember with me. Old Manos would never let you down. No, not ever. <laughs> yes, splendid. Splendid indeed. So yeah, I mean, he just told it was from a witch. So, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take him out here, and I'm gonna just for spite buy a homeward bone so we can get back easily from him and then kill him. Um, I also t attempt to. Uh, let him fight, which I should have done with all the NPCs. Um, just to kind of see. So he fights with the pickaxe, which is cool. That is a weapon you can get in the game, but not from him. Um, and he does that spin move, which I don't think you can do. Uh, and then I try to parry him. Which I can do. Curses. But he drops his hammer and his royal helm. Which is similar to my uh, my helm, so I use it for a while. Helm of Vamos, skeleton blacksmith of the catacombs. Partially made of gold and confers a higher resistance overall. The helm is believed to belong to an ancient royal line, but only Vamos would know for sure he shall never speak again. 
the only way to get that helm, is by killing him. Hammer of Amos. Metal Hammer of Amos, a skeleton blacksmith deep within the catacombs, can be used as, as a strike weapon, but better left in the hands of its owner. So yeah, I like that touch. But he, <laughs> we could have asked him about his ancient line, but uh, he will never speak again. So... I think that, um, yeah, I think that, I mean, it's possible that he is a character that we know about, um, but just because, you know, he has a very distinctive look and, and all this stuff, you know, maybe he's the divine blacksmith, I don't know. Um, it's certainly uh, fun to speculate on, but uh, I think he's just Vamos and he's part of a royal family, he comes from royalty. And he knows a lot about the ancient things, so. Alright, well, that should about do it for this episode. Uh, I'm just trying to see if there's any other things to do, but uh, we'll get everything wrapped up in the next episode, so. Hmm. You have made it back. Go ahead. Even an I just seeing if she had anything if you require new, rest, that... which she doesn't. I do think I skip one of her dialogues in the next episode, but I think we get an, enough good lore, so see you next time. Bye.